Hello everyone, my name is Gajendra Deshpande. I am working as a student professor at KLS Gokta Institute of Technology, India. Today I will be delivering a talk on investigating digital crimes using Python. So in today's talk, I will be discussing in brief about introduction to digital crimes, digital forensics and in the investigation process. And some modules related to Python such as PyScreenshot, PyPDF, etc. Then we'll see about investigation of emails and investigation of embedded metadata and finally the conclusion. So let's see some cybercrime statistics, but before that, let's define the cybercrime. So cybercrime is nothing but the crime done using digital devices and gadgets such as laptops, mobile phones and gadgets, etc. The Internet Crime Report for 2019 released by USA's Internet Crime Complaint Center, IC3, of FBI has revealed the top four countries that are victims of internet crimes. So they are USA, UK, Canada, and followed by India. So according to RSA report of 2015, uh, mobile transactions are rapidly growing and cyber criminals are migrating to less protected soft channels. That is because not many people are aware of security and privacy settings of uh, mobile phones. According to report by Norton 2015, an estimated 113 million Indians lost about rupees 16,558 rupees. That is almost equal to uh, $250 on an average to cybercrime. According to an article published in Indian Express on 19 November 2016, over 55% million millennials in India are hit by cybercrime. A recent study by Checkpoint Research has re recorded over 1,50,000 cyber attacks every week during COVID-19 pandemic. There has been an increase of 30% in cyber attacks compared to previous weeks. Now let's define the field of forensic science. So it, forensic science is the use of scientific methods or expertise to investigate crimes or examine evidence that might be presented in the court of law. Cyber forensics is the investigation of various crimes happening in the cyberspace. Examples of cyber attacks include phishing, ransomware, fake news, fake medicine, extortion, and insider frauds. Note here that your cyber attacks can be classified into external attacks and insider attacks. Now note here that insider frauds or insider attacks are more dangerous because uh, here, the unhappy employees may be involved in revealing the confidential information to the outsiders. And this information can be further used to carry out the attacks. Then according to Digital Forensics Research Workshop, Digital Forensics can be defined as the use of scientifically derived and proven methods toward the preservation, collection, validation, identification, analysis, interpretation, documentation, and presentation of digital evidence derived from digital sources for the purpose of facilitating or furthering the reconstruction of events found to be criminal or helping to anticipate unauthorized actions shown to be disruptive to planned operations. Now, digital forensics investigation process has six steps, identification, collection, validation, examination, preservation, and finally the presentation. So let's discuss in brief each of these steps. So in identification step, the investigation officer visits the crime location and he needs, he will identify the different devices which he will be seizing for the investigation process. So it may include mobile, laptop, computers, then various gadgets, then different parts of computers such as uh, hard disk, then network cables, uh, USB pen drives, etc. Then next step is the collection of evidence. Now when the investigation officer visits the crime location, the system may be on. And note here that he needs to take the picture of the system state and collect the evidence from the on system. So he, need, he should not switch off the system. So the process of collecting the information from the switched on system at the crime location is known as live forensics and it is very, very important. So if you switch off the system, its state will change, then the data may be lost. Note here that some evidence may be present in the volatile memory. So you your evidence can be classified into volatile evidence and non-volatile evidence. 
so in this process the investigation officer has to first collect the volatile evidence because if he switches off the system that will change the system state and the evidence may be lost similarly if the system is off then he should not turn on the system so that's a very very important step because that may alter the system state and there may be a loss of information and this may not be accepted as an evidence in the court of law then third one is the validation now note here that the investigation officer is the taking the snapshot of a system they are taking the uh, image of a system now note here that they cannot perform investigation on the original data so they need to make the copy of the data when they make the copy of the data they should ensure that it is the exact copy of the data in this case they can use the cryptographic hash functions to match and to verify that the both original and the copy of the data are same then in the fourth process they are going to use investigation officers are going to use various tools they may also write python script or any other programming language script for various purposes so the main goal of examination step is to find the evidence the next is the preservation step note here that whatever uh, component equipments digital gadgets you uh, see they need to be protected they need to be kept in proper place for example if there is a hard disk then that hard disk has to be placed in the uh, standard bags known as faraday bag and it has to be placed in a uh, locker at a proper place in a proper security so that the information should not be altered then finally the presentation so in this step the investigation officer will present the evidence in the court of law note here that there is a standard procedure and investigation officer has to follow the standard procedure if they don't follow the standard procedure then that may not be accepted as the evidence in the court of law then some python modules or some python packages for digital forensics are py screenshot which takes the screenshot of a screen then qopri which does the encoding and decoding of the mime information so mime is nothing but the multi purpose internet mail extensions which are used while sending and receiving the emails then next is the mutagen it's a python module to handle audio metadata then py pdf2 it's a pdf toolkit again it handles the metadata associated with the pdf files then finally the pe file so it basically here the it's a multi platform python module to parse and work with portable executable files now note here that all these uh, python packages they are pure python packages that means they don't need any dependency then let's first discuss the py screenshot it tries to allow to take screenshots without installing third party libraries it's a cross platform but mainly useful for linux based distributions and note here that it's uh, it's a cross platform wrapper that means there are various libraries so you can see the installation command which mentions the pillow library so that means in this example py screenshot will work as a wrapper for pillow library which is image processing library in python so this is a code example which basically takes the screenshot of the entire screen so first step is to import the py screenshot module then use the grab method then use a grab method to capture the entire screen then save method should be used to save the screenshot then similarly you can also take the screenshot of a part of a screen so in that case you need to specify the coordinates x1 y1 and x2 y2 now you can also go for performance but performance is the not the goal of py screenshot so the main goal of goal is to collect the evidence but if you are concerned with the performance then you can use the py screenshot dot check dot speed test module so it basically gives the uh, performance related information related to various uh, packages now when you run this command it will basically take 10 sc screenshots and note the times for taking those 10 screenshots now if you want you can op optimize it by disabling the child processes so in this case it will take less time with respect to some libraries so depending on your requirement you can choose the appropriate uh, backend library 
so if you want to set particular uh, backend so instead of using pillow if you want scrot then you can specify here in grab method then similarly you disable child process so when your backend is MSS and child process are disabled this code will give you better performance the next is email investigation so you can see here in my slide this is the fake email I have got I don't have any Netflix account but it says that uh, there is a statement and I need to make a payment and you can also observe here that it's a fake email clearly because this email is not from genuine Netflix account and similarly there is some business offer I don't know this person but I have received a uh, business offer maybe some maybe to settle the amount of uh, 15.5 million again it's a uh, fake email so such emails you can identify using open source tools there are commercial tools are also available but if you want you can also write the python code now for email investigation uh, the investigator has the following goals that is to identify the main criminal then to collect the necessary evidences then to present the findings and the final the build the case then the challenges in email for six are fake fake emails spoofing and anonymous re-emailing in anonymous re-emailing what happens is the server drops the identification information and it just sends the email content then there are some techniques used in email investigation widely used technique is the header analysis then server investigation then finally the network device investigation apart from this there are other techniques are also there now in this uh, code what is happening is the uh, access the headers and body content attachments and other payload information is extracted now in this code we are extracting the message body content by using the get payload method then finally we are checking the content of the MIME type so that it can handle the storage of the email properly so MIME stands for multi-purpose internet mail extensions so when we deal with MIME content we are dealing with different types of data we are dealing with text content HTML content uh, image content and the audio video content so when we store the different files such as PDF we need more storage so that can be handled if you are checking the content of the MIME now you can also extract the attachments using uh, this code now you using the following code or using the code mentioned in this slide you can extract the message body now after extracting the information the important step is to compare it with the uh, original information and check whether it is the fake information or it is the original information the next step is metadata forensics so we know that the metadata is associated with every type of file be it a text file audio file image file source code file or any file so mutagen is the python module which can handle audio metadata so it supports various types of uh, audio types it can be mp4 flac mp3 org format etc etc so it works with python 3.6 you can find more information on mutagen mutagen libraries read docs website so you can install it using pip command now in this code the file function takes any idea file as the input and guesses its type and returns the file type instance now in this code the length and bitrate of the mp3 file is extracted And similarly, uh, if, if you want to deal with the metadata of PDF file, you need a separate module that is PyPDF2. Again, it's a pure Python library built on PDF toolkit. So it is capable of extracting the document information, splitting the documents page by page, merging documents page by page, cropping pages, merging multiple pages into single page, encrypting and decrypting PDF files. And it is very useful tool for websites that manage or manipulate PDF files. So again, as in case of email uh, investigation, this is the first step, that is the extracting information. After extracting the information, you need to 
perform some kind of uh, string processing or document processing operation or you can also use advanced technology such as machine learning or natural language processing to extract the information and to find out the evidence the next is the pe file that is nothing but the portable executable file it's a multi-platform python module to parse and work with the portable executable files so most of the information contained in the pe file header is accessible as well as all sections details and data so you can also deal with exe files and uh, .dll files and extract their metadata using pe file module and then later this information can be used for investigation then some of the tasks that pe file makes possible are in inspecting headers analyzing of sections data retrieving embedded data reading strings from resources warning for suspicious and malformed values overwriting fields should be should mostly be safe then packer detection with pid signatures then pid signature generation so if you observe the functionality of most of the libraries it's, it's same so it basically extracts the additional information and this additional information can be used for further investi investigation so maybe we can compare it with original files we can check whether it has changed when it has changed whether it con consists of uh, any extra information which gives the hints about the uh, criminals or the data then the conclusion is it is very important to follow the standard procedure laid by law enforcement agencies during investigation process there are many open source as well as commercial tools for digital forensics but learning to develop your own tool is advantageous then many tools written in python are pure python implementations so they don't have any dependencies thank you